Yo, what is good guys? Crypto TMG back with a brand new video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Rensport open beta. Um yeah, I've personally actually had the key for Rensport for about a year now, which I think I streamed it when I first played the game probably about a year ago now. Um obviously some things have changed, new tracks have been added, cars and stuff like that. We're gonna go through my thoughts on what Rensport's doing or what they're trying to do and um give sort of the pros and the cons. <laughs> and yeah in the comment section tell me what you guys think so first things first i was given a code for Rensport, like i said around about a year ago so i've had previous experience on this game um now they do seem to have like a a founders pack and you know 15.99 let's check what you actually get with the gold founders pack um you get access to the nurburgring nordschleifer and one car purchase credit um and a gold founders badge which doesn't seem like that much for 1599 when you consider like what you get on acc for 1599 normally you can get quite a few cars or, or a, a track pack or something so not too sure about the pricing 3169 for founders pack platinum and you know again it's track access to the nordschleifer the porsche 911 gt3 rensport with a unique founders pack not sure what that means maybe it's a livery you get a, um, a one car credit a static livery See, these static livery means just you know just a livery i guess that doesn't move um on a founders track billboard you get your name and a gold plus platinum platinum badge i mean for 3169 that literally is the price of some games at the moment especially in sim racing a lot of the sim racing titles are not typically as expensive as you know triple a titles like a, a call of duty or anything like that so i mean the pricing is a little bit steep considering what you're actually getting man so um 55.99 now this is pretty expensive again you get nordschleifer you get the porsche you get two car purchase credits get your name on the runoff area is uh, a bit I don't know how fit like I don't know it's almost as if we're not five anymore stuff like that it doesn't matter when you're only thing that matters is the racing man like it's the quality of the game all these little things they're cool but they're gonna die out very quickly you know um, a dynamic livery I mean if you're for me personally liveries especially in sim racing and i guess as I, I come from a competitive mindset i normally don't just you know jump into a game and just do open lobbies i i prefer to get myself into a league do league race and stuff like that the only time liveries are tend to be important is when when your race is actually being streamed and it's got like a, a whole broadcasting production behind it so you can go and watch it back and then you know you've got your own iconic livery but if you just got a dynamic livery just to go in the open lobby and while you're driving you can't even see the thing i mean it's not you know it's not something that's you know groundbreaking it's not something that sort of you know is game changing for for you to be spending 55.99 it's insane you get a dynamic livery a static livery and all founders badges man listen a lot a lot of money in that look i thought iRacing's pretty expensive for, you know you want to buy a car you want to buy a track but this is not enough man like <laughs> from 15.99 to 55.99 and all you're getting is a, a one extra car token and some dynamic liveries is actually insane and i don't know what i, I generally don't know what they're doing i don't know what the selling point is to this um like why would you why would you spend that much for a, a couple of liveries realistically it's it's not sort of it's not like you're getting you know five six seven extra tracks and you know you're literally getting a couple of liveries and i don't know it's a weird one man like the whole to me the whole ren sport game is just weird the whole selling point of this game literally has been us just watching esl r1 if you don't know what that is that's the sort of the esports competition with you know all some of the top sim races in the world battling it out for 12 laps and 
each stage only six cars can go through until you get to the final round where you know and then the the, the top 12 guys from all these different races that qualified in the top six from each round they race in the final round and it kind of feels like they've sort of used people's love for other drivers that we've watched on other platforms to gain interest into the game because let's be honest the only reason why I watch ESL R1 is because I see McCormack on there, I see Josh Rogers on there, I see Kevin Siggy, I've seen um, James Baldwin, all these sim races that we've watched over the years who've been, you know, quality on these other sims like ACC, iRacing, R Factor, even the original set of Corsa, they've got like Thomas Tartella on there, and guys that I've watched for ages. That's the only reason I actually watch the game. I don't watch Ren Sport because I feel like, oh, this game looks good, or, you know, there's any particular quality basically the whole selling point has been you know people who are really into sim racing competitive sim racing and they sort of follow a lot of the drivers that are now competing on ren sport and other than that what has there really been about the game that's you know attracted people and this is where the confusion is coming like what is the actual attraction <laughs> to, to ren sport at the moment and it's it's I don't know, it just comes off as a bit of a money grab. Now, I've tried to watch as many streams as I can. I've tried to watch people going around in the track and I'm not seeing anyone really infused about the game. So I thought I'm going to get on. I haven't driven on Ren Sport in quite some time. So I'm going to get on, drive around for a bit myself um, and just see how the game feels. I do want to check. Uh, they said they've got some official contests now. So now i guess you can they've got some sort of i guess it's daily races which is you know stuff like this is good they need stuff like this and it looks as if it's every 10 minutes so at least there is constant races on all the time which i guess is a good thing right about now i still don't believe there's any setup so i think every single race is a fixed setup so you don't really have to be worrying about setups and stuff like that but you know for someone like me um who's really into the setup side of things, I, I would hope there is another, you know, another avenue where you can get sort of the longer races, hour long races or whatever, where you can fiddle with the car, build your own setups and stuff like that. Um, but again, having daily races is a very important part of sim racing games nowadays, especially, you know, since we've seen, you know, what LFM's done with with ACC just completely elevated that game. Definitely need the daily races. So it's good they do have daily races. Um, can't complain about that. It has a calendar also, so I guess you get to see um each day of the month what you're going to be racing and what times. Which is uh, this is actually pretty clear as well, so it's easy to follow. Um, I guess if you don't have certain tracks, then obviously you're not going to be able to can around certain tracks but at the moment i think that's only one or two tracks that you won't be able to drive so it's not too bad um let me see what tracks they actually have on the game now uh ch -ch -ch. want to do a time trial so we've only got what's this this is a figure of eight okay forget that so we've got monza spa daytona fuji Goodwood is not really, yeah, it's not really a racetrack. Hockenheim, uh, Road Atlanta, Nürburgring 24 Hours, which is the Nordschleife, which is the Founders Pack, so obviously you would need to buy that, buy it, spend $50.99 minimum. Um, Nürburgring G Prix and also the Orchard Road Street Circuit is in, I think it's in Singapore, I believe. Um, so it's about that about nine tracks or whatever um so just imagine spending 55.99 for nine tracks and I, there's not a great deal of cars on this game either see like the way i see ren sport is sort of in the realm of project cars you know i feel like it's definitely not a sim like acc or iRacing or r factor it's definitely not let's just get that out of the way it's not that but it, should be in the realm of project cars 2 and if you think about project cars 2 think of the amount of content that you got on p cars 2 
you know, and you're spending what? How much is PCAS 2? I can't even remember. Probably like 30 something. Like, actually, I think I got it for like 17.99 for CD keys. And the amount of content you got off of PCAS was crazy. And then you've got these lot trying to sell you 55.99 founder packs for what is realistically not even a half of a game is crazy to me um now if I, I could say all this and if the physics were absolutely mind-blowing and the laser scans were perfect and the graphics were just booming then i could understand but it's like this game hasn't been built on anything you know it hasn't even been built on okay we know these developers and they've you know they've got a track record of producing great games if if who knows were to come out and wanted to charge 55.99 for um set a course at evo we could say do you know what take take the money because we've seen what you've done with the original set of course we've seen how popular that still is today and that game is years old we've seen what you did with acc so we we can say listen we know these guys know exactly what they're doing and they produce quality quality games but ren sport it's like bro what what is this you know <laughs> like I, I don't i don't even know how they've managed to finesse even having competitions on the game like in the way they're doing it because it, it, to me it just doesn't seem like there's a, like really a massive interest there it's like i really only really know about it because i follow some of the drivers that are in it and that's about it um and again a lot of people say well look iRacing's expensive but with iRacing they were really the first to do it so iRacing brought about a structure that was not there before before them so they started something so they you know when when you when you're the leaders of something you can afford to charge how much iRacing charges because they were the founders of this whole you know this m massive multiplayer online universe that they created so they can afford to do that because at the time when iRacing came out there really wasn't anything like that so now you know they can enjoy the fruits of their labor because they started it and all these other games trying to come out now and trying to get people to spend a large amount of money people are not going to be going for that because we say well i can just go play acc and go on lfm and do all this for free i can go on flipping le mans ultimate if i want to i can i can do anything i don't need to be spending crazy amounts of money especially if the competition is not going to resemble what iRacing's got especially if it hasn't got the tracks it hasn't got the amount of different cars you know it doesn't it just kind of doesn't make any sense to me and i'm hoping that the game itself feels good but for me from what i've seen and the way it just seems like a bit of a money grab a bit of a hustle i'm just not sure man like i don't know i, I don't want to be like overly negative but to me it's like it's, it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit you know not a scam but it's a bit cheeky to be honest because there's not really that much um what else did i want to check i did see something else so they've got leagues so you can I guess you could sign up for leagues 48 drivers 53 drivers okay so you can sign up for leagues and what do you get um you earn points based on finishing position average rent sport rating in your split numbers of drivers in your split the league winner will receive a first ever in-game prize in rent sport either the hyundai electra electrana i think you say or or the audi rs3 lms with an even i don't know what that evin is I'm not sure what that is that will mark it as one of a kind vehicle ah bro look this you know what this sounds like to me lads i'll be honest Whenever I hear one of a kind vehicle and all this other stuff, it sounds like GTA roleplay. When when people set up their own servers on Grand, Turis um, Grand Theft Auto and they get people to pay for certain positions in the server and then you might pay like 60 quid of your own money to the people that own the server and they might give you like a, a one-off car that no one else can have. It's like 60 quid. 55 quid just to have a car that no one else has got it's like come on man the most important thing in sim racing is not having one-off cars and one-off liveries and stuff it's the actual game 
this actual community you know like i feel like they're focusing on like oh, how can we make some quick money here you know like oh man and i've literally been watching people play this and i'm looking i'm just like bro like it's just it just doesn't scream anything positive to me right now but having said that i am going to you know get myself around the track and then i'm going to see how the game feels uh okay <laughs> well i guess these wheel settings ain't working let me uh let me try something else so we're going to go into controls and then force feedback and this is the preset for the t300 um pretty sure it has a uh Preset for every wheel. This is probably going to be a bit heavy for me, but we're going to see. Um, the tick rate is that the new to me? I'm sure it's like four for the T400, right? I'm sure, it's 400 hertz. Um, sensitivity on 200. Okay, well, as you can see, anyway, you can pretty much load up all the all the wheels but i'm sure your wheel will be here somewhere um and then you can just load your preset that's what i did i loaded the t hundred preset don't know how it's gonna feel um see let me just save it Boom. override right let's see now what this game actually feels like so redoing all my key bindings it's a little bit annoying because you you pretty much have to um you pretty much have to map everything even the upshift and downshift and the to map the pedals you have to map the cameras literally everything even gotta map the downshift bro it's so much to do um also sometimes your pedals maybe look as if they're stuck on that means you have to invert them so i'm trying to look for the clutch to invert that to get the clutch off now we should be good i think i still need to map buttons for my cameras i think so i can change camera in the car I need to map that as well we'll do that i don't want to do too much else um i might want to do field of view settings you know i'm a bit funny about the field of view can i do it in here is there a button in here where i can mess with the field of view turn camera to the right left no fov settings no damn all right well this is the pretty much the basic so let's see if we can finally start driving something now Okay. Wow, so much clipping with the wheel like this. Okay, okay. That is way too heavy. <laughs> Damn. Um, force feedback. Let's take that right down. Let's try this. Okay, that's better. Um, well, actually, I better turn the game down otherwise you won't be able to hear me. Right. So the force feedback isn't terrible. I'll give it that. I won't say it's bad. back in well okay I don't know it might, maybe it might be a t300 thing you can't really feel the back end once once it starts to go and there isn't really a 
sort of a, a, a warning or you know kind of can be a bit similar to race room sometimes yeah there's no there's literally no I don't know there's no tire feel whatsoever when you start sliding the car which is interesting Like you don't know you're having a moment. You have to rely on the visuals instead of the feeling. Oh my god. Yeah, there's literally nothing out of the rear. I guess my my tires are pretty much dead. We'll restart. <laughs> I haven't changed TC, I haven't changed anything so far. It's, it does feel a little weird, I'm not going to lie. Oh my god. Yeah, there, there's there's no rear end feel whatsoever. As as heavy as the four three back feels, it feels like pretty decent when you're just sort of driving, but the moment you sort of throw it into a corner, you don't feel anything in the back end. It does just give me a whole P cars vibe, man. See that that time I caught it because I I sort of expected it to happen, but there was no feel, you know. Yes, <laughs> I don't know, lads. I mean, I, I want to have some positives about it. I do. I just don't right now. Very skittish over the curbs. Almost feels as if you go into corners too fast, the back end's just instantly ready to kill you. Yeah, all I can pretty much say is it just sort of reminds me visually of P cars. Which I mean is not a bad thing, but P cars is years old now, you know. Uh, we're getting a bit used to it. Basically, just don't overdo it. Don't outbreak yourself. And you, you won't have any problems with spinning. But if it do goes, if it does go light, just like that, bro. There's literally no feeling in the rear end whatsoever. And even for me right now, my force feedback is pretty high compared to how I would actually have it. Um, and I cannot feel the rear going away at all. Like, you literally can't feel it. So, I mean, 
let, let's try another track, man, or try another car because maybe I'm just driving like an absolute idiot. But so far, yeah, it's, it's not, I, you know, I'm not seeing anything worthwhile in terms of whether you should spend your money or not. All right. So um, let's try a different track in a different car. All right, lads, this time we're in the Hyundai um, touring car. And we're going to go around Nürburgring. Not too sure about this FOV, to be fair. Should be able to change it. I just think it's rapid. Oh, this thing's quick. Okay, it doesn't want to slow down now. Damn. Okay. Wow, the force feedback is weird in this car. It's, it feels clunky for some reason. Yo, what am I, bro? What am I feeling in the force feedback right now? It's. It's like it's, it's like it's got steering assist on or something. Again, when it starts to slide, there's no, no feeling to correct it. You just got to sort of realize you're in a slide and correct it yourself. Okay, I'm not too sure about the brakes in this car. Probably braking a bit too late. What are you guys thinking about the visuals, about how the tracks actually look? I think we're probably a little bit spoiled with, uh, oh shit, touch the grass. That was definitely on me. Probably we're a little bit spoiled with ACC and games like that. I'm enjoying the, the different texture of grass though. I think that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> am I clutching at straws here? Oh, it's the slow chicane. Damn it. My bad, bro. I didn't know it was that chicane. Oh, hold on, hold on. Why is my force feedback? It feels like the car is driving for me. Is there is there assists on this game? Assists. Um. Disabled automatic. Gearbox disabled manual, bro. Yo, that's weird, guys. If you haven't tried this car try this car and tell me that it's not steering by itself bro it's pulling me to to one side i'm turning it's it's weird it's absolutely weird i've never felt anything like this before the only thing i can think of is if you you know if you've got steering assist on and you're turning right while the wheel's trying to put you to the left or something that's how it feels man it's it's weird um yeah, I don't, <laughs> I've never felt anything like this, man. Um, this car doesn't feel crazily bad. It actually feels better than the GT3, the Audi. Um, but again, it's just, I just find the whole thing weird. I don't know whether it's me. I don't know if the tracks are laser scanned, but I feel like it's not. You know, I feel like this is not a laser scan. I do like the texture of the grass and the fact there's like daffodils and stuff. It's a little bit different, but as I said, I'm absolutely clutching at straws, bro. I'm talking to you about the grass on a game and we're here to race. I know you guys don't care about the grass. I don't even really care about the grass, but I'm trying to find some positives <laughs> so far in my test of this game. And I'm going to be real. This is absolutely piss poor, mate. For the for what they're trying to charge people for, founders editions and all that other stuff. Listen, everything they've done here, I believe, should have probably been done on race room 
because I feel like with Race Room, there's actually something there. You know, there's a good, solid base there to have a great game. I don't see that in this game. I don't feel that. So far, the force feedback is... Could I even say average yet? But I don't even think this force feedback is as developed as P-Cars 2 was. And that is years old. And that force feedback wasn't even anything special. This force feedback is just heavy. It's not really any detail in it. It's just heavy. You know? Um, ah, bro, man. Like, I, like literally. <laughs> I wish I could show you more. But I've, I've, I feel no, just nothing... There's nothing in me that actually wants to even play this game. I just, it just feels like it's just like, these guys, they're not serious. They're not, they can't be serious, man. <laughs> they cannot be serious, man. This game is just, it's below par, man. For what they're trying to do, it is below par. Now, I do not know how this game will feel in a direct drive world because I don't have one. And of course, you know, if you watch ESL R1, those guys are managing to, handle it pretty well but come on we all watch them races we all watch the, the 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 um the broadcasts and when you watch the cars go around the track it, it doesn't even look appealing bro it doesn't all right the way the cars move around the track it doesn't look like there's any sort of realism at all as i said before the only reason why i watch it realistically is because i like to root for the guys that i know came from well, not came from ACC, but the guys that I know played ACC before Rensport. So, I, I, you know, like the Dominic Blyers and the McCormacks and stuff, I, I'll be rooting for them to win because it, it feels like Rensport's a place where all the other, all the drivers from all the other realms of sim racing have come together to see which guys are the best from each different, each different game. So you have all the top guys from my racing and all the top guys from ACC and the top guys from our factor and the, some guys from flipping, I don't know, whatever other game they play, like Race Room and stuff like that. And they've come together to see which, you know, which drivers are the most talented. That's the only reason why I watch. I don't actually watch it for the actual, actual game itself. And that is probably the biggest problem, man. This brand sport's just not interesting. The game itself. The competition is cool. And I like competitiveness, so I will watch it. But, man... Bro, listen. <laughs> they say, give, give us your feedback about the game. Man, listen, I don't think there's enough. There's, there's not enough, there's not enough uh, letters for me to type. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if they wanted my honest feedback, man, it's, it's, it's just not good. I, I'm going to keep it real. It's just not good. I, this game's ass. I was being nice before. I can't be bothered anymore. This game is trash, bro. I'm sorry. All right? Like, they need to do way better than this if you're going to be charging people for crazy amounts for Founders Editions, man. Like, what Like what are we doing? It's like, man, like, I, I don't know. Look, oh, look, I can change the FOV. I can change the FOV. So let's, let's start off with this because I, I, I don't really be liking this whole sat all the way back in the back seat um distance so if i push the distance forward and then maybe a bit, a bit like that and we can um we can try again but i just don't like this this feeling that i get whenever i'm in the car and the car's just steering by itself i wish i could show you guys on my camera like the wheel's literally doing what it wants the force feedback there's something wrong here i'm telling you Bro, if that's if that's this game's interpretation of force feedback and wheel spin, wow. Okay, okay this car's brakes are not anything special.
will say this car is more fun to drive than the GT3 by far. But this this whole weird force rap, force feedback thing is horrible. Wait, what was that slide? Uh, do, nah, do you know what? Nah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Guys, my personal opinion, final thoughts. It ain't worth it, man. It's just not worth it. Considering this game is, you know, it's an open beta. They've got time to improve it. They would have to do so much to change my mind. I don't even know if it's possible. You see, the first time I played Race Room, it was free. This was probably 2017. And even then, I could tell that there was something there. You know? There was definitely something there. The, the natural, organic feeling when I just felt the game straight away. is like, okay, this feels all right. This game just feels weird. The steering feels weird. It feels like, I don't like, the force feels like it's delayed. I, I, it's just weird, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you guys, man, but, um, you don't believe me, go try it out for yourself, leave a comment in the comment section below, tell me what you guys think about Ren Sport so far, for me, man, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not it, it's not doing it, alright, anyway guys, Cryptic TNG, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to catch my videos first, and peace!